Hi, in this particular video, we're going to be looking at compound measures. So there's three formulas you need to know. One is speed equals distance divided by time. The other is pressure, which is force divided by area. And then the final one is going to be density, which is mass divided by volume. You need to remember those three formulas to work through this, which is aimed at about grade five GCSE. I look forward to seeing you inside the video. Okay, so we're going to look at uh, question number one. Please do stop the video, have a go at this particular question, and then compare your solution. So we're being asked to work out the density of the bar of gold, giving the answer. And the important thing here is grams per centimetre cubed, but the actual mass has been given in kilograms. So immediately we need to change that to grams, okay? So with a lot of these questions, it's very uh, good to always focus on the units, but when you've got the units in place, then effectively it's just then applying the formula. So density equals mass divided by volume, and it's one of the three formulas that we're going to use with this particular uh, worksheet. So the mass we've got, we know that is 1520 grams. The other area is the volume. So the volume of this particular bar is going to be, the volume is going to be the area times the depth, okay? So the first thing is we work out the area, which is going to be this along here, which is eight times two, so eight, times two and then the depth is going to be five and when you work that out you're going to get 80 centimeters cubed so that's the volume of this particular gold bar so that's going to be divided by 80 and that's going to give you a density of 19 grams per centimeter cubed and that's the answer to the first question hopefully that's useful to you okay let's move on then to question number two so a steel block exerts a force of that on the ground so as i mentioned the intro the formula we're looking for is pressure equals force divided by um, area okay well in this particular question we're given both pieces of information. We've got the force is 120 and the area is going to be 2.5. So 120 divided by 2.5 is going to give us 48 and it's newtons per meter square. And that would be the answer to question number two. Okay, hopefully that's all right. Let's move on then to question number three. If you're not sure about anything, always leave a comment below and I'll always come back to you. Okay, number three, a crystal rock has a density of that and a mass of that. Work out the volume. So again, we're going to be using density equals mass divided by volume. And uh, as I always do in these videos, I do suggest you always write the formula that you're actually working with. It's really important to get those formulas in your mind. OK, so in this particular one, we can say density is 1.6. Uh, mass, we're told, is 80, which is perfectly fine because it's in grams. And this is grams per centimetre uh, uh, so grams and grams is absolutely fine. And then we've got to work out the volume. So we're going to use here a little bit of algebra. If I multiply both sides by volume and then I divide by 1.6, what I'm actually going to get is volume equals 80 divided by 1.6. OK, and put that into a calculator or calculate it yourself as 50 grams. And that's a big pun, 50 centimetres cubed of this particular crystal rock. I apologise for that. OK, it's definitely centimetres cubed. OK, hopefully that's all right for you. A little bit of an error there. I do apologise. Let's move on then to question number four. So question number four, again, we're going to follow largely the same idea that it's all about using the density formula that density equals mass divided by volume and again I would encourage you always to write the formula. Okay so in this particular uh, case we're told that the mass is 392 so that's perfectly fine. What we need to do then is work out the volume. Well the volume of a cylinder or the volume of anything equals um, area times depth. Okay so the difficulty we've got here is we've got a circle at the top. It is a, a cylinder. So therefore, the area of a circle is pi r squared. Multiplied by the depth is going to be 2.5. That bit's easy enough. So the radius of this particular circle is actually going to be 9. So what they've given us here is the diameter 
which is 18, therefore the radius, which is half that, is going to be 9. So it's going to be pi times 9 squared times 2.5. Work all that out, and you're going to get 202.5 pi centimetres cubed. OK, so then it's really just a case of taking that information and putting it straight into the formula itself, 202.5 pi. Now, you'll notice I've left it what they call in terms of pi. It doesn't really matter. It's just that I don't have to write out all the numbers if I multiply 202.5 times 3.142, etc. So what I'll end up with is still exactly the same answer, which is 0.616 one eight grams per centimeter cubed to two significant figures is going to be 0 0.62 grams per centimeter cubed and that's the answer to question number four hopefully that's okay for you let's move on then to question number five i'm going to aim for about 20 minutes or so on this video if we can okay so a train travels a distance of that in three hours and 20 minutes okay so uh the formula here is speed equals distance divided by time and this is a very common formula you're going to come across this one an awful lot particularly for gcse so the distance is 295 now bearing in mind i'm looking at miles per hour so miles that's fine and then the other issue is I need to make this uh, 3 hours and 20 minutes into hours. So the way I would do that is I'd write that as 3 hours and then it's 20 out of 60. Now, if you prefer, you can write that as 3.33333, so on recurring, because 20 minutes is a third of an hour. But the way I'm going to do a lot of these calculations is to take the minute value and just simply put it over 60. And using a scientific calculator, you should be able to calculate that out fairly easy, 88.5 miles per hour which is the answer to that particular question okay let's move on then to question number six so question number six is an iron bar um, and it exerts a, a force of that on a table okay so we're looking at pressure equals force over area and we've got in this particular case work out the area of the uh, uh, the iron bar that is in contact with the table. Okay, so the pressure is going to be 30. Uh, the force it's exerting is going to be 38. The area is the bit that we're trying to calculate. Again, use a little bit of algebra and you should end up with area equals 38 over 30. Put that into a calculator and you'll get 1.26 recurring meters squared, which is the answer to that particular question. Hopefully that's okay for you. Again, checking the units that you're going to be working in. All right, let's move on then to question number seven. So question number seven is we're going to go back to a speed distance time, but there's a little bit of a twist on this particular one where it's going to be a case of looking at the overall journey because we're told the first 78 miles. So I'm just going to have a look at the first 78 miles and really we're told that he drives 78 miles at a speed of 65 miles per hour so we need to use that information um, of speed equals distance divided by time in order to work out how long it actually took Govin to drive that length of uh, that distance rather so the speed is going to be 65 um, the distance is going to be 78 and the time we don't know, but with a little bit of uh, algebra, we can work out that time equals 78 divided by 65. And that's actually going to be very neatly 1.2 hours. Now, remember that 1.2 hours is 0.2 of an hour. OK, so if I want to work out um, how many minutes that is, it's going to be one hour. And then if you prefer, um, it's like 0 0.2 of 60 minutes. OK, so that's actually going to give me one hour 
and 12 minutes. Okay, so that's the time it takes Govin to actually drive that first 78 miles. And then it says from that point, it takes uh, one hour and 48 minutes to complete the journey, which is the rest of the mileage. So it's going to be the difference between the 78 is already driven and the 200, so 122 miles in one hour and 48 minutes. However, what we're interested in is his average speed. And the interesting thing here is for the whole journey. So therefore, if we look at the whole journey, I'm going to use exactly the same formula that speed equals distance divided by time. So speed equals distance divided by time. But in this particular case now, we've got the total distance, which is going to be 200. And we've got the time it takes, firstly, for the first 78 miles, which is um, one hour and then 12 out of 60. Remember what we do with the minutes. It's one hour and 12 minutes. Well, that's 12 out of 60 as a fraction, but that also will allow us to calculate that as a decimal. Plus one hour and then 48 out of 60 for the final bit of the journey. When we put all that into a calculator, we'll find that his average speed is going to be 66.6 .6 recurring miles per hour, which is uh, to one decimal place 66.7 miles per hour. And that would be the answer to that particular question. OK, uh, so a little bit of a twist on that one. Uh, you need to really read the whole question through just to make sure that you're absolutely OK with it. Um, these sorts of questions do come up a lot, actually. They're very popular on GCSE Maths. And there is a playlist on some similar questions if you'd like to have a look at that as well. OK, let's have a look at a, um, a sort of similar type of question here where we've got John's driving from Leeds, London, an average speed of 65 and it takes him three hours and 15 minutes. So let's look at this first bit here. And if we look at John's journey, it's going to be speed equals distance divided by time. OK, well, what happened with John? Well, he did a speed of 65 miles per hour and the journey itself took him three hours and 15 minutes. So the distance divided by three hours and then again 15 out of 60. And if you want to then work out the value of the distance, we multiply both sides by three hours and 15 over 60 or three and 15 over 16. And we get 65 times that, which is going to give us 211.25 is the total distance of the journey for John. OK, which is the same journey that Julie makes. So if we look at Julie's journey, OK, and guess what? I'm going to write the same formula, speed equals distance over time. I must write these formulas hundreds of times in a year, I would have thought. OK, so the distance is going to be 211.25. So that's going to be 211.25. OK, but it takes her three hours and 35 minutes. So that's going to be three hours and 35 out of 60. Put that into your calculator and you're going to get 58 point nine five three four eight eight okay and that's to two significant figures is going to be an answer of 59 point uh, 59 miles per hour to two significant figures okay hopefully that's all right for you let's move on to the final two questions on this particular worksheet please do stop the video have a go at these questions and then compare your solution so this is uh, one where a cylinder is being placed on the ground and uh, the cylinder has a weight of 95 newtons and a radius of that work out the pressure on the ground well again use the formula pressure equals force divided by area. So what we've got here is basically a cylinder, OK, and it's got um, a radius of three centimetres. Well, that's great because it allows to work out the area. And then the pressure on the ground is going to be 95 newtons. OK, so let's have a look at what we can do with that. Well, we've got 95 
and then which is the force and then the area is going to be the same as saying pi r squared because it's the area of the circle it's actually the circle at the bottom here which is pi r squared so the radius is three so i can write that in as pi times three squared which is nine pi so basically i'm going to divide this by nine pi when i put that into my calculator i'm going to get 3.35 nine nine three okay and this is newtons per centimeter squared okay which is the uh units that they're asking us to give it in which is perfectly okay for that particular one so to two decimal places i could write that as 3.36 uh newtons per centimeter squared and that's two dp and that would be the answer to that particular question okay hopefully that's all right let's move on then to the final question on this particular uh, worksheet which is where we've got a cone with a perpendicular height of that and it's placed on a table the weight of the cone is that okay so let's have a look at what we need well we need to know pressure equals force over area now the reason we're going to do this is because if we can find the area of the cone okay we can look at then working out the volume because the area is going to help us to give us the value of the um basically the pi r squared part of it you'll see what i mean in a minute or two as i work through this okay so let's have a look and see what we know well we know that it's 4200 newtons per meter squared and it's a force of 62 newtons so i've got 4200 equals um, 62 divided by the area which is what we're trying to figure out well the area itself then if we use a little bit of algebra is going to be equal to 62 divided by 4200 now the important thing with this is what we're actually going to get is the value in meters squared which is actually going to be 0 0.01476 meters squared okay well that's really quite awkward because the measurement of the perpendicular height is given as centimeters and it's really kind of better probably to stick as centimeters um, otherwise we're going to end up with a lot of decimal places so what we need to do is convert this so if you can imagine the way we would do that is that we've got um, effectively an area where this is one meter and this is 0 0.01476 meters along this particular length okay and if we multiply the two together we get that area well let's now convert it to centimeters well effectively we've got the same piece of material but rather than having one meter that would be a hundred centimeters okay and rather than having this we're going to move the decimal point two places because there's a hundred centimeters and a meter so that actually would be 1.476 centimeters so now to work out the area of this in centimeters we can just multiply the two together now i know absolutely it's not to scale but what we're trying to do here is just illustrate that if we go from a meter to a cent uh, a meter square to a centimeter square it's a little bit easier to draw it as a little bit of diagram because then if we multiply this by 100 we get 147.6 centimeters squared okay which is great that's the area now the volume calculation is very helpfully being given in the formula itself so the volume of the cone is going to be equal to a third pi r squared h now you'll recall that the area of um, the the circle at the bottom there is going to be pi r squared so what we can do is take this value and substitute it for 147.6 and then we're going to multiply that by a third and then we're going to multiply that by the height which is given as 20 and when we work all of that out we're going to get 984 centimeters cubed and that's the answer to that particular question so a little bit tricky we're really erring on the side there of coming up to kind of a grade six type question but these have been aimed predominantly at grade five hope it's been useful to you please do add a comment below if you're not sure about anything i'll look forward to seeing you inside the next video